Call of Duty New, one of the most well-renowned and respected achievements in video game history, or at least it used to be, something that thousands of kids and adults, including myself, have dreamed of getting ever since the nuke was first put into the franchise. I can remember trying to get it back then and in almost every COD that's had the kill streak since. Anyway, ever since finishing the Interstellar Camel Grind, almost every time I've queued into an MW3 multiplayer match and gotten a kill streak, such as the Advanced UAV or Swarm, the thought of can I turn this streak into an MGB has crossed my mind. But not only that, there's been plenty of games where I spawned in with the explicit purpose of getting a nuke. But attempt. Oh my God. After attempt. No way had been unsuccessful. Every single time I get close to 30 kills in a row without dying, I'd choke the kill streak in some way or another. But then this past weekend, I logged on to MW3 early on a Saturday morning to start warming up for some ranked resurgence games when I noticed that they added back the 12v12 playlist. The big team game modes are some of my absolute favorites to play in MW3. And in my opinion, 12v12 is superior and easier to get streaks in than 10v10. So I was pretty happy to see that they added it back. Anyway, I queued up, loaded in, and selected a weapon and I would be using in Ranked Resurgence, but at the same time, I've tweaked to become one of, if not the best gun to use in Season 2 of MW3 multiplayer. And don't worry, I'll show you guys the class at the end of the video. So while still wiping the crust out of my eyes and sipping on my first cup of coffee for the day, I loaded in not thinking of anything other than just trying to warm up the old thumbs. But my mindset totally changed after I got my first kill of the game. It was after that first kill, the thought of, wait, could I get a nuke in this lobby? Popped into my brain. Because usually, I can tell right away how sweaty a lobby is going to be after essentially my first couple of gunfights. And let's just say that first gunfight and the ones after it were pretty easy. So I take out a couple more enemies, which confirms that, yep, this is definitely a lobby I can potentially drop a nuke in. So I lean forward in my chair and I get to work. Things go pretty smoothly at the start with most of the gunfights being pretty calm. I work my way up to my advanced UAV, but don't call it in right away as I want to get closer to the 30 kill mark before calling it in. After my 13th kill, given what I know about the low difficulty of the lobby, my hands start to sweat. Hopefully I'm not the only one who deals with that when they get on a high streak in the game, so I take a quick second to stop and make sure my hands are dry before continuing on. But not long after I'm done cleaning my hands off, does the enemy start making a push for the area I've been chilling in since the start of the game. It's at this point that I know it's possible the whole enemy team is spawning on me, so I decide to call in my advanced UAV instead of holding onto it for a bit longer. Thanks to my advance, I can see one enemy push down the ramp, which turns into an easy 18th kill for me. Naturally, I run back up to the spot that's gotten me over halfway to the MGB, but then I encounter a predicament. I have my advanced UAV up, but there's not many enemies close by to me. I quickly wipe the sweat off my hands once again, and then decided I need to get aggressive to make the most of my advance. In a tougher lobby, this push out of my rat nest would have gotten me killed, but thankfully, I come away with three more kills and my kill streak still intact. And now this is where things get even dicier. Just watch. No. I get put one shot twice in a span of just 10 seconds, and I stim, bob, and weave trying to preserve my kill streak. And somehow, I come away with my life. Now at 22 kills, my advanced UAV runs out, which is never good for momentum when trying to get a nuke, and it's why I usually wait as long as I possibly can before calling it in. So I tell myself to slow down here. You absolutely cannot choke the MGB in this lobby, and that's what I do. I basically iron my way around to the other side of the map where I finally start to pick up some kills once again. Eventually, I work my way back around to where I initially started my kill streak and pick up my 28th and 29th kills. I take a deep breath and think to myself, you're only one away from this. Do not choke. I pop my head up looking for one more kill and the glint of a sniper scope makes me duck in real life harder than I ever have in COD before. But as I turn around, I see the glimpse of an enemy start to run up the ramp towards me. And with some good shots, I take down my 30th kill in a row, earning not only my first MGB of MW3, but also my first nuke in the entire history of the COD franchise. After getting it and quickly dying after, I unmute everyone in the lobby while also checking the score to ensure I still have time left to call it in. Seeing that the hardpoint match is drawing to a close, I call in my first ever Call of Duty nuke. My teammate Headache celebrates the MGB with me in classic Call of Duty fashion and congratulates me via the voice chat. So shout out to Headache for being a bro. I return to the lobby and immediately begin looking to equip my new MGB calling card, only to realize that there isn't a fucking new calling card. Like, come on, seriously. But out of the thousands of calling cards we have in the game, there isn't one for MW3 multiplayer nuke. Anyway, I push past my disappointment knowing that I finally achieved my goal of getting an MGB with no reverse boosting, VPN, session joining, anything else. Was it the sweatiest lobby ever? Not by a long shot. I mean, just look at these KD ratios, but I still did it without any enhancements, 
except for the caffeine. And honestly, that's enough for me. Oh yeah. And then in the next game, I got another MGB, but forgot to call it in. What can you do? Now, for those curious, here's my match history, which shows my three previous matches to my nuke games. Clearly no reverse boosting there, which I think just goes to show that this game mode is ridiculously easy compared to 6v6 or even 10v10. However, one thing I want to note is that I'd say the bigger maps in this playlist are generally better for getting high streaks, except for derail. That map stinks. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a deviation away from the type of content I've been making recently, but it was really fun for me to record and edit. Now, if you're mainly subscribed for the guides, tips, and tricks videos, don't worry. We'll be returning soon to the usual format with tips and tricks on how to hit crimson and ranked resurgence. So make sure you subscribe if you either enjoyed this video or are looking forward to that one. Anyway, here's the class I used to get the nuke, and regardless of what playlist you're in, I would highly recommend giving this one a go if you haven't yet. And the class that I used to get the second nuke was literally just the SOA subverter with zero attachments on it, so not much to show on that one. But with that, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.